Josh, welcome to Timelines. It's a thrill to have you on today. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So you're out in Santa Cruz, California. I'm in Reno, and we both had this big, huge storm that came through, and you survived the storm, but you didn't have power yesterday, so I'm really surprised that you're here today. Yeah, yeah. The PG&E guys got back, you know, got out there about three in the morning, started taking the chainsaws to this tree that had the power down, so we're back at it. Yeah. I, you know, it's really funny yesterday, folks, the listener out there, um, Josh gave me an email heads up right away, which I appreciate that and said, I, I don't think I can make it. Then I sent him a cancellation link and a re- reschedule link. And I saw him come back. So I said, is my system not working right? Because he was canceling what I should have done. Lesson learned. I should have given you a call on the cell phone just to verify. But this is really good. I'm, I'm happy to knock this out because I really want you to be on WP Tonic, which is our WordPress co- uh, podcast, which gets, you know, two or three hundred WordPress experts actually listening to it every week. It's a great show. And and plus, it, a lot of other folks come on. So we really need to get you on a Saturday morning. Cool. We all get a big Blab audience there, too. That's by far our biggest show, Saturday morning. Sounds great. Well, I'd love to jump on that and help and, and talk with your community because, you know, we love WordPress and any of the any of the WordPress communities that um, rally around a podcast or something that you're producing is is awesome. Yeah. Kim Shively is on it often and she is from Florida, but she's also a speaker at WordCamps and at WordCamp USA on learning management systems. Wow. And you she, uh, she she's just now reviewing your, your, your plugin. Cool. So, Very and cool. in fact, she sent me an email uh, today about your plugin, reading it and talking about the integration. Uh, she had a question about integration and we we're talking about, because I was getting ready to do, um, I am email automation system class today. If I had to, I do sometimes if I don't have a guest or something goes on, I'll go on and it's kind of neat. I'll just take my time and I'll bring experts on. We'll talk about, then I'll go back and create a show just using Adobe edition for a podcast. And it comes out pretty well. I just sort of do a little research, read about it, talk about it, then go on. And it comes out. Well, I, I really like doing those. I'll probably do at least one show like that a week, a tech show. That's great. So, so you're just doing kind of walkthroughs of different plugins and things. Yeah, it works really well. I'll go in and read it, research it, and I'll use Wiki even, or we'll talk about a specific topic. Um, mm-hmm. We were going to talk about um, email providers. In fact, my – let me hold one second. We can- okay, Josh, I think I've lost my mind today. I, uh, I stumbled <laughs> onto you, and I, I actually – Infusioncast is one of your old podcasts, and I was just talking about LA, LA WordCamp, mm-hmm. and I was down there, and people were talking about you. And I can't remember exactly who I meant, but they knew you and they told me about you. And that's how I started listening to Infusioncast. Right on. And then, then I got into um, Infusionsoft, which I, I've used, but I'm in the process of contemplating transitioning out of Infusionsoft um, because I think it's a little behind the times in some areas. And it, I've had a little bit of API integration problems too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's not uncommon. You know, They need to, uh, in my opinion... Uh, kick it up a notch when it comes to improving their product. And, uh, you know, I've seen them invest a lot of money over the, a lot of years in improving their sales team, which is great for business. But right. as a customer, um, I, you know, I get updates from what we use now, Active Campaign, on almost a monthly basis with three, four, five feature improvements or new features altogether. And it feels great to be a part of a company now that's always improving. And I, I wish I could say the same about Infusionsoft, but unfortunately I can't. And, um, you know, I, I've been to three icons um, at this point and um, each one, they talk about a product release. It comes out and it's always like, like nothing, like just hot air, you know? Yeah. Um, so uh, it's, it's, you know, it's time. The, the market's not going to wait around forever. And uh, I think they're really focused on brick and mortars um, and s- small business. They're going down chain. That's that's OK. But, um, you know, there's a lot of players in that market. You know, Drip just came out with uh, some new um, functionality. I think they call it workflows, which is you know now a pretty good marketing automation. You've got ConvertKit. You've got ActiveCampaign. You know, MailChimp has improved their product. Um, it's fierce. The competition's fierce. And I'm excited because ultimately, you know, if you if you know just basic economics, competition isn't a bad thing. Um, it's going to refine the, the competitors and make it better for us, the, the customers. So well, well, if you, if everyone goes on the timelines of success or timelines interviews on the right side, you'll see this goofy little form. And that's an HTML form made on Infusionsoft's you know, five years outdated little form maker. <laughs> yeah. And I have other form makers, but I just stuck it up there 
And that's been some of the drawbacks. So I'm in the process right now of I help. First of all, I use MailChimp with my nonprofits. I help some nonprofits with their websites. I built them. I provide free hosting, things of that nature for these nonprofits. But And, and I always hook them up into MailChimp. And so anyway, I, I'm doing research right now. So if you're giving me some advice, what direction should I go right now on the on this type of area, the email response management system? I don't have to. I want to keep costs down too. Yeah, I mean, I well, I think Active Campaign would be a great option. I mean, the thing is, uh, in full honesty, I haven't really dove into all the ins and outs of ConvertKit and all the ins and outs of Drip mm -hmm. and some of the others. Um, I know a lot about Infusionsoft, a lot about Aweber, Mailchimp, um, Entreport, uh, and I think that you know the way that we approached it was really looking at where's the company headed, like. What yeah. are they doing as a company? Is it is it something that we can commit to for two, three, four, five years? Um, and I loved, uh, I think it's the CEO's Justin Vanderbloom, who's the CEO of um, Active Campaign. I watched some interviews with him. I like the way he was thinking. Um, you know, I like the user experience of Active Campaign. Um, I think that if you're coming from an Infusionsoft world and you want the flexibility to create some pretty cool automation. Um, you want to, and, and you want an API that's pretty friendly. Yeah. And active campaigns. Great. You know, I know convert kit. A lot of people love convert kit. I think they're really focused on bloggers. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't know enough about drip, but I'm excited to try drip. I think they're uh, on the same page as active campaign. I just haven't had any exposure, but what I love about active campaign is, you know, for nine bucks, you can get pretty much everything you can get with Infusionsoft minus the e-commerce. Yeah, who really gives a rip? It. Yeah, but who gives a rip? Because Infusionsoft's e-commerce is actually like from the 1990s. So yeah. it, that's the one part of Infusionsoft that even when we were working on it and building things for people, we always recommended they got out of that, went to like a WooCommerce with Infuse Woo integration or something else because the, the you're just so limited with their e-com. And Infusionsoft people will go, well, then things aren't talking to each other, but it's not the case anymore. I mean, not with things like, uh, you know, Zapier or, um, you know, lead pages, new center software. I mean, things now there's technology that makes things talk to each other. It wasn't like when Infusionsoft was being started, you know? So it's, it's a, it's that argument is such a, um, kind of a non-issue anymore because I can now have a Zapier integration that pings, uh, and, uh, active campaign, with from Stripe that works great, or I can use right. WooCommerce with Infused, uh, yeah, it's Infused Woo, um, which is a great great tool to connect them from Active, you know, Active Campaign to WooCommerce. They've got Shopify integration. I mean, the list goes on and on. So it's really cool. You've got text messaging automation for nine bucks. I mean, that's that's, that's amazing. That's pretty amazing. That's real, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at cost because. Yeah. If you want to survive or start up in a business, you've got to really watch your cost because it does take time to build up your list, your contacts, your knowledge base to understand what we're doing. And that leads us into what you're all about, which is the learning management systems, mm -hmm. LMS and LMS Lifter, which I have been studying for about five months looking for a platform. I've looked at a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And Ron Wilder, a common friend of ours, actually led me on to this. And he's not a WordPress insider, which is amazing. I learned this from a third party and I'm around all these WordPress people with WP tonic. Cause we, we interview everybody, the very top WordPress people in the country, in the world we've interviewed. And basically I learned this from Ron and I'm really pleased with your product. Thank you. By the way, Ron got all paranoid when I, he mentioned to me, I knew some of your plans coming out <laughs> about uh, your marketing strategy, which I really like too. I think that's the way to get it out is to offer a free freemium. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's been, a, it's been a weird switch in some ways, you know, you, you have to, I don't know. I've always ran a business um, on the strategy has to be guided by the convictions that I have and, the, mm -hmm. and the, that my business partners have. And when we looked at, if we, you know, if we truly want to change online education, if we, we say that, but if we actually want to do that, we have to have a technology that's a bit more ubiquitous than what we currently have, in my opinion, because we need to, we need that sort of broad feedback so that we know how to, focus and develop the product you know if you just have a small segment of people um that's great i mean it's good for if you're just coming from a business standpoint you can make a healthy business of a fairly small segment and selling to that segment but you know we've got we've hundreds and hundreds of people in third world countries who can't simply just couldn't afford our product um 
So, so that raises the question. I mean, you say you want to change online education, you want to democratize it, you want to go around the world with it, but you know, most of the world's in third world countries and they can't afford $150 a year, you know? So what do you do? And so that, that got us thinking. And so, you know, where a lot of companies release uh, an open source product that has something missing that you have to upgrade to get, uh, right. we actually did the opposite. We added functionality before we made it free. And the technology that we added was our voucher functionality, which allows you to essentially create a unique redemption code so that you can give that redemption code out. Someone can come use it to access your online course without entering any sort of uh, credit card details. So you could have given them like 100 percent off coupons, yep. but that doesn't bypass our e-com system. They'd still have to enter a credit card. But in third well, let me tell you what I did. <laughs> I've got uh, three different levels. I over the last few months, I put out. We do. I put out to a group of people. We do a lot of blabs, a lot of activities, and basically offered it. I'm developing a set of courses, a range of three courses: an intro course, a medium level course, and then really an advanced course to bring everything in in the communication business, like we're doing here. Mm -hmm. But one of the foundations is the WordPress site, and then to educate and train people. That's where we're using Lifter LMS. So we're doing all those things. But what I did through Infusionsoft is I offered for free. Initially, it wasn't Infusionsoft, but offered for free X number of people who are listening to have a couple of my levels of courses that I'm involving. Then I went out to see if there's a demand and, knew, and was testing the Infusionsoft shopping cart and charged a small amount of money for those who would want these levels too. So I pre-sold stuff. That's great. So your, your product is perfect yeah. because now I can make that list of codes, send them out an individual code and say, here's your code, sign up. You know, this is going to allow you this membership level. Yeah, and, and, and I, the use cases are great. I mean, for, you know, Ron, our mutual friend, does some in-person training. Now he can have a companion course that he can give a description right. code away. But ultimately, though, that's not why we decided to put that in the core. It's because in Africa and, and Nicaragua and all these different places, they don't have PayPal and they don't have credit cards. Really? Cash exchange, man. So they give you a hundred bucks or 10 bucks or whatever. Wow. You as a teacher give a redemption code and they access it online. It's not that they don't have internet. It's not that they don't have access to it. They just know there's no commerce that happens in these third world countries. Yeah. So if we really believe in our vision and, and that vision is to democratize education, we have to build functionality that supports that. So open source is one thing, but then giving them a way to sell is another. And, uh, you know, I, I can say that it's, it's pretty exciting when you release an open source project and the first wave of submissions to that open source project is all translation because it really shows wow. that what we're doing, that vision is being met and connected. I mean, Bang, Bengali, or Bangladesh, I think it's Bengalese, I don't yep. know, you know, um, all sorts, Hindi. I mean, we have, we've had just submission after submission all from these places in the world that we want Lifter to go to, but in our, in our old business model, it simply wouldn't happen. So, you know, you, when you do something like that, you're always going to step on people's toes. There's a handful of people that were frustrated in that, but I think we did a great job taking care of the people that stuck with that stuck with us from, a, you know, a paid subscription to a free plugin. Um, mm -hmm. I, we put a lot of thought in that into how we could kind of hook people up and make them feel like we weren't, you know, doing something behind their back. Um, so overall, it's been a great transition. Now we have a plugin that's, you know, user base is, is quadrupled in the last month. And well, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and pay for the pro account today. <laughs> so I'm not guilty. So sort of like your, uh, not quite donation, but you know, similar to start. It's like saying, Hey, thanks. We appreciate everything and you're doing. Means a lot to also, us, you know, <laughs> also out of the box is that the idea is you can go right into PayPal. You can test your product without spending hardly money. Mm -hmm. Just stick it in there, plug it in, hook to PayPal, make a course. Yep. I mean, watch your training. Your training is excellent. That one little training course you go yeah, through. Definitely. I did it all. I usually don't do the whole courses. I'm one of your guys. You remember <laughs> that first 80% or 20%? Yeah. I did every one of your courses. I got your little certificate at the end. Yeah. And I'll go back and clean it up. I did find your little code gap though. I know. Chris um, mentioned that. You, I figured it out. I worked, fix it two seconds. It only take a second. <laughs> I showed Ron, by the way. Cool. I said, Ron, Ron, look at this. Ron's a great guy. I love Ron. I sat there with him. <laughs> I assume that 2.2 fixed that little uh, glitch. You know, I know the guys are definitely working on it. We actually have 2.2.1 that came out too. So there was another, it's horrible that I don't know what that lat, that 2.2.1 is, but yeah. yeah, I mean, we're doing multiple releases every week. So we're cleaning up things really quickly. Hey, promise me we'll get you on uh, WP Tonic yeah. on Saturday morning as soon as possible, because I think it's timely. You're moving fast. And before you get 
crazy, crazy busy with all these downloads. I, you could take over the industry with your, your product, the way you're doing yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I'm that's convinced. the goal. You know, I think our competition's pretty entrenched, but, um, you know, it, it doesn't take a lot to transition out. I mean, a lot of times they're using the same database methods. You create an importer plugin. We're here. <laughs> you know, you know, we, we talked a little bit about Infusionsoft and marketing. And I think I, it was from you or somewhere I heard that you really need to transition where you have 80% of your time is spent on marketing. That's how you make the money to make your engine run, to have your 20% of developers working mm -hmm. and building product. But initially you have to spend 80% developing and then get the marketing going. But you need to monetize no matter who you are or you won't stay in business. Yeah. So, I mean, you're there, you're, uh, you're moving fast. You're going through that, you know, transitional stage to build products, themes. I'm sure you're, you're going to charge for themes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We do actually, yeah. this is the next open source project that we're putting out. So we have a theme framework similar to what Genesis is called. La I love Launchpad. Genesis. It's very Genesis-esque, but it's a, a free um, a theme essentially, but it's a, it is built like a framework so that, the goal there is that theme shops, so any anybody who's listening who owns a theme shop or is a theme developer can take that and create a theme, a learning management system theme or co course focus, for, focus theme in, in a fraction of the time for building it from scratch. And all you have to do is, is connect Lifter. So the way I describe it, Bill, it's like Lifter is the engine to the car. Uh -huh. Launch pad's kind of the frame of the car. So, I mean, we can build yeah. our own frame, you know, maybe it's a mini Cooper is what we build, but someone else yeah. who wants to create the Lamborghini can do that too. It's still using the same engine, but you know, the look and feel and everything's different. And so I'm excited to get that into the hands of other theme developers because ultimately, I mean, they're going to have different ideas on how a student should, should walk through a course, the, you know, the visual side of the learner's journey. I mean, we're not claiming to know all the best ways to teach online or the best visual methods to teach. So that if we can create a tool that helps people spin that up faster and connect to our system faster, that's awesome. And that's another, you know, open source project that we're, we're excited about. So we're gonna have two really killer open source projects that, you know, I hope, um, yeah, I'd love to come on WP tonic because we're always seeing, Hey, who's out there who wants to participate and help with us, uh, you know, refine this and get this out into the world because it's cool stuff. And I mean, we're not lying when we say it's open source either. It's, 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 it's genuinely, uh, you know, made to be pulled down, modified, you know, we just want to know about it. <laughs> just tell us what you're doing, you know? Yeah. We'll, we'll get you on as soon as possible. We'll schedule that with that. We're going to go our first break. We're going to come back with your life and success principles. We talked a little bit of tech early on. There's really a lot to your story. So we'll come back to your story. That's good. Okay, Joshua, coming off the break. I'm a little fragmented today because I stayed up late last night. I said, "Now, nah, I, you know, I'm just going to do a special show tomorrow." And we had the hurricanes, the trees. We got eight foot of snow above me here. Wow! And we didn't get snow about. I'm at five thousand feet. We didn't get much snow at my level. It melted away. But um, heck of a storm it came through. We're back talking to you. Let's hit your life and success principles a little bit about you. I'm really interested because I've seen so much. I'm learning so much about you on this show. But tell me real fast, where'd you grow up? How'd you get where you are today? Tell me in 30 seconds. Sure. I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, went to school in Los Angeles, had a, a stint in China in manufacturing, got E. coli, went back to my parents' house in Indiana, got better, started freelancing, met Thomas in LA, started code box, then started Lifter. Nice. Code box. Very good. So where'd you go to a college? Azusa Pacific University. Okay. Yeah, I know Azusa. Yeah. LA. How'd you get to LA? Uh, you know, my dad was a teacher at Indiana Wesleyan in the Midwest, mm -hmm. and there was a, a tuition exchange program. So I could go to that school for, for you know, tuition waived because my dad was a professor and I got it waived in L.A. And, you know, I've always been kind of a Western West Coast kid. Any excuse to get out of Indiana when I was 19, I was ready to go. So, yeah, I, I made the jump. I've been out here 10 years now. So I know a little bit about you because I listen to podcasts, know, like, and trust. I know your mom was an elementary school teacher mm -hmm. and your yeah. dad's a professor. Now he's in real estate. Are they out West now? No, they, um, they're still in Indianapolis in the North yeah. side. Yep. You can always go home. I, yeah. It is fun to go home. I always tell people it's a great place to be from, you know? Um, and I, I love the Midwest for, yeah. you know, it raised me in a way and, and it gave me a strong work ethic and a great, great worldview. Um, 
but it's fun to be in Silicon Valley now. And, yep. and, and for what I'm doing, you know, the ideas are here are bigger and it's good to be in that, that environment. You said something that's really important that I'm sort of learning after the fact. I love Reno. I love the mountains. I love the hills, creek mm -hmm. fishing, climbing. I was a mountain soldier, a special forces mountain soldier when I was young. I just have a passion for whether you're snow skis or mountain skis, or whatever it might be. I just love being able to go outside and do what I do. Mm -hmm. That said, I do know and I do recognize that you're much better developing something, even though we have this connectivity, is to be in a Silicon Valley, to be in a Denver, to be in Atlanta, to be near a big metropolitan area, because you still have that personal interconnection to see people. That you well, and, and you know, that it's there's that whole, what is it? You're the average of the five people you're closest right. to. And and you, it's kind of like a law of gravity in my mind. I mean, you can fight it. You can try and fight it. You can try and prove that that wrong, but you're not. And, yep. you know, uh, so you, you've got to be conscious of who you spend your time with and who you spend your time around. And I think the other thing is just getting out of your comfort zone and putting yourself in situations to be, you know, the, uh, for lack of a, a better term, the dumbest guy in the room. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've got Singularity University over the hill from me. You got guys who are pushing the limits with biotech and biohacking and, you know, creating immunity packs that change your blood in an instant. So you're, right. You know, there's stuff that I can't even fathom, you know. Um, but I, I'm not afraid to go sit around those guys and try and, and try and get in their world and try and think those thoughts. Because when I come back to the WordPress world that I live in, which has a bunch of brilliant people too, I just have a different perspective now. You know, you got a guys, guys over there who are using virtual reality and, and VR and augmented reality to beam you into a, a, a classroom where you're interacting there. I mean, Man, I mean, I'm like, I feel like I'm I'm 20 years behind doing WordPress courses when you hear stuff like that, you know. So it's it's really cool. It's really cool for the listener just to geographically put where Josh lives in Santa Cruz. There's Highway yeah. 17. You just go. It's a beautiful drive up over the hill as long as there's no earthquakes. Yeah, and you come in Santa Clara Valley, which is really the Silicon Valley yeah. in Moffett Field. I was stationed at Moffett for a long time. Oh, wow. And and you can get up to San Francisco, Sac, uh, Stanford, of course, uh, even San Jose, Berkeley, Cal, of course. Yeah, I mean, and, I'm like an hour and 15 south of San Francisco, 45 minutes from Palo Alto, you know, 45 minutes or so from San Jose. So, but I'm also out of, I'm, I'm you know, I'm in Santa Cruz, which is its own ecosystem. It has its own tech scene. There's a lot of great companies here, you know, Plantronics, Looker, um, uh, Ruli, Tool, um, you know, the, just a lot of, of tech happening here now. The full mm -hmm. power guys that do the Motion X, the GPS software, and the Nike Plus running app are here in town. So, you, you know, for a town of 50,000 people on a on a big day, that's when UCSC, the school's in session, you've got a lot of exposure to some big names and some big thinkers. You know, Seagate hard drives was here before they moved to in San Jose. Netflix right. is right in Los Gatos. So, I mean, you got everybody's here so how long does it take you to get that little 237 corridor right there not long not too bad yeah that's what all bad. these companies are right there boom yeah. big buildings right on 237 yeah. one side used to be a dump <laughs> yeah, i know it's it's crazy they just <laughs> they also, the whole place so. yeah it's the Silicon valley the integrate the uh, blue cube is there you know what that is right the blue cube. The satellite stuff off the satellite oh, yeah. blue cube to the left side Yep. That uh, is, we used to be top, top secret. Now it's a little it, Lockheed Martin did all our communications research for the military. That's awesome. Yeah. So, that's anyway, really you're cool. just being around that environment. I miss that a lot. I'm about five hours away of uh, Tahoe, Reno. And we have a lot of money here. See, they retire from over where you are. They come up <laughs> and live in just across on Lake Tahoe on, on the uh, Nevada side. So they don't pay the state tax. Well, that's where, you know, my family's that, you know, speaking of real estate, that's where a lot of, we're all kind of looking to see if we can get something in Incline Village or in yeah, Incline. Area, we love that area. Absolutely love it there. In Incline is like the ancient re uh, Silicon Valley people. One, <laughs> one thing I caution about Incline is like, they're all 10 years behind the technology curve. They're all wealthy because they made all their money in Silicon Valley, but they sort of, if you don't stay current because you know how much things have changed this year. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have a similar situation here in, in where I'm at, which is kind of the top of the Salinas Valley, is you've got old ag money. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. Salinas Valley who wants to invest in tech, but they don't really make it into Silicon Valley. So that sits in Santa Cruz. So you have an interesting uh, kind of microcosm of investment and, and tech meeting agriculture here. But it's it's the old, you know, guys who, you know, you got my buddy Scott's family basically invented the artichoke, you know, and right. Right. Just multi billion dollar company. And it's like, Hey, 
we don't know what to do with it. You guys want some money to go play around with your tech stuff? <laughs> it's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> See, I spent some time on the other side of you in the military too, down at Fort Ord when it was active. Yeah. And of course, uh, DLI. I was actually at DLI when 9-11 hit. Wow. That's uh, the week before. The week before I just finished up. So That's awesome. Yeah, I go camping near Fort Ord and stuff. So it's beautiful it's good, area. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So I man. almost, uh, Seaside's another town I looked at. I looked at a lot of different places, um, affordability to build a business, things of that nature. Yeah. Hey, we uh, let's get into your life and success principles. Yeah. What is your first one? I wrote them down. I got to go find them here. Uh, you asked me and now I'm blanking on it. So. No, we, we did this. See, normally we didn't, we, this is fun. Josh, uh, you know, fought through not having any power yesterday and I didn't expect this to happen. So hold one second. Let me look at them. We've up. got living in the moment. Oh, Wait a second. Okay, Josh, let's go into your life and success principles. Number one is always be learning. Yeah. I mean, when you have a, a family who's been in education, you know, your mom, who's a first grade teacher, dad, who's a college professor, you learn how to learn. And um, I think for me, a big part of the learning experience in my life is by, by experiential learning through travel. So I'm 29 years old. I've been to 31 countries. Belize and Guatemala will be 32, 33. So, you know, part of my always be learning is always have however old you are, that many countries under your belt and exposing myself to different cultures, different ways of doing business, different ways of thinking is absolutely crucial to my success. You know, and I think that um, I, there, you, I think I could have taken a different path. I could have stuck it out in a business and learned through doing something maybe in corporate America, but I've had a much more of a kind of vagabond journey and it's building a life that I'm really, really proud of. And part of that is I'm, I'm learning by experiencing and moving around. So huge, hugely important for me. Okay. This podcast is going to go a little long today because I'm going to ask you another follow-up question. Sure. I totally believe that the way we learn is changing, mm -hmm. that this online business, it's not like reading a book because we can interact, we can use checklists, PDF checklists, and we can watch it. If you can watch it and see it and do it, what do you mm -hmm. think? What, 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 how are we changing? What's the oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, we make these statements in Lifter, like, you know, democratizing education and you know, revolutionizing education. These are big, big ideas, big, big statements. And I think that we're not, I don't think we're in the phase of 100% online learning yet because, um, you know, just the data doesn't show that it's a better way of learning. There's a lot of, of data that shows the online class model, um, you know, doesn't have a highest, uh, that high of a success rate or retention rate. I think where we're at is blended learning. I think online education and these online tools like Lifter LMS should supplement what we're doing here. Having a conversation it doesn't have to be an in-person conversation, but having a interaction being able to process in real time with a human being it's an invaluable it's hard to you can't really replicate that yet i i think maybe we will be able to down the road i do think that we'll get to a point where you know the matrix kind of like you plug it in download the you know the karate you know knowledge or whatever i think like we'll get there in some way shape or form especially if you look at what people are doing with flow states and um you know getting into flow state and then learning in that state and the retention that happened i mean there's some crazy stuff coming but right now like exactly in this moment we're in a blended learning phase so if you're an online teacher or coach and you're not having some sort of group conversation or you're not doing any interaction with your students my question is like how much do you how, what to what degree do you care that your student actually enacts the information you're teaching see and this is actually a really good segmentation question because it puts people in two crowds the people who don't really care and who are really hyper focused on passive income and then the people who care and the people who care, uh, it, that sounds really harsh, but the people who care usually have like a pretty extensive ascension model because it's unrealistic to say, think that you're going to have these types of conversations with thousands upon thousands of students, but you've made a system that allows you to, it allows you to segment students who want that interaction with you. So I think that like we're in that sort of phase and those sorts of businesses are really the ones that I admire and the ones that are, are taking off, you know. Very Those good. Are, that's how people make money right now. The people who are like, I don't mind making any money. It's like, well, yeah, you just put a course out there and you're trying to walk away from it. It's like, you still got to work. You know, you still, you got to teach. If you want to be a teacher, you got to teach. So, um, yeah, I think that blended learning to me is, is very, very exciting. And, um, you know, I, one of the things that I've run recently was a coaching, um, 
coaching course called Course Clinic. It helps course builders build online courses. And so I do this. I practice this because we have uh, a video that go goes out that where I teach and everyone learns. They get the concept there. And then I spend my energy not teaching, but actually helping them the students apply the learning in their lives. So my energy isn't regurgitating information over and over. I created that once, it's done, it's good to go. I spend my time making sure that people get it. And uh, and that's been really, really special and it's working well. I know a little bit about the backside of your course because I was really, really impressed. You actually screened your students and didn't let everybody in. Yeah, I know. I, I think I heard someone didn't get in. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Wilder said, was checking it out. And he said, Bill, fill this out. I'm really busy doing a million things. So I just like one word answers. And then you come back, give me another chance. And he comes back and that was good. That was good. <laughs> I'm like, Sorry, man. And I am well, and I, and then, yeah, it's no disrespect. I mean, it's not a, it's not a, yeah. it's not for everyone, but you, you know, you gotta be, uh, you gotta hold your line somewhere. Yeah, it was good. You know, a lot of people don't hold the line. They're like, they say they only, they, they use the, the, Hey, we're only going to let 10 people in as a ploy, as a scarcity play. Yeah. You know, You're serious. Marking. No, I mean, we didn't even take 10 because there wasn't 10 people that we wanted to work with. It wasn't That's about good. that. You know, it was about getting the right people in the right room to get the right feedback yep. to create a killer course next, a killer evergreen course. That's and, and you got some good people. I know Ron and you got excellent people. And, and I definitely didn't have the time because we've been studying for three or four months, the uh, learning process and WP Tonic spent a whole month just talking about different elements. Every month we pick a topic and talk about it. That's great. In fact, this month we're actually talking about making money online, which is unusual. We have different theories and systems. Well, and we processes. can talk about all that if you want me to come on, because my background was actually uh, in academia. I published in knowledge management, essentially. How can right. I get what's in my head to your head the fastest? Yeah. And I, I did some modeling that I got to present at, at Harvard and I flew mm -hmm. to Cambridge and presented there. So it's, it's one of the backbone pieces of research that people are now building on top of. Um, so I'm in this thing deep and I, I'm really interested in, in um, how we can we can do that better. How do we get what's in my head to, to your head the fastest? That's after the show today, we have a lot of folks that want to come up with you. But after the uh, podcast is done, which are going a little long, we're going to come up on YouTube and we'll go ahead and get into that issue. How do you learn? Because I, I'm, I'll tell you a little bit about what I've done in my background too. But let's wait till after on the YouTube portion to get the podcast driven through here. So live in the moment. Love that one. Live in the moment. What's that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I think I've always really struggled with that. Um, and I never connected the dots until um, I hit kind of burnout last year, last summer, I was just on the brink of I felt like I'm losing my mind doing too many things, not focusing. And I, I went to um, New Zealand and bought a van, uh, bought a surfboard, traveled for three months, kind of took my role at Codebox down to uh, the management level, you know, not really innovating, not really pushing things, but seeing, hey, I want to live and work on the road. I've got two great partners that allowed me to do that, take some time away. And I started a meditation practice and a breathing practice. Um, the meditation practice, I'm using an app called Headspace, really great app. Um, it's not like spiritual or anything like that. It's just very focused on some some mm -hmm. techniques to to control your thoughts and focus your thoughts. And then the breathing method is from a guy named Wim Hof, who um, has set a number of, of world records for um, his tolerance to the cold. And he um, he uses a method called inner fire, which allows him to regulate his body. It's pretty incredible. He's actually was injected with bacteria and was able to control his autoimmune response with his mind. Uh, and he trained himself to using cold exposure and breathing. So I use a combination of both of those techniques that um, has really helped me. If I do it in the morning, my day is totally different. And I really do like, it's almost like I've got two brains. I've got one brain that's actually doing the operating. And I've got one, another brain that's like observing all of that. And if you see a you know stressful thought come in, it's like, hold on, you're in Santa Cruz. It's sunny out. The waves are picking up. You'll surf this afternoon. It's fine. You know? Yeah, like, live in the moment, right? Yeah, and so you're just back in the moment. It's 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 you know. It, but we don't train people how to do this. You know, um, we don't train. And it's in. It's funny. It's you know, talked about in all sorts of the major world religions. But no, everyone's like, go meditate. You know, they say it in some way, shape, or form. But no one teaches you how to do that. And so I think it's one of the most important things I've done to really get in the moment is just to get some tools in my toolkit. Like, how do I do that? You know, and I can't recommend the, the Headspace app um, enough. Uh, it's it's it, the 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 ten day free thing that they have mm -hmm. on the app. 
everyone should go do that. I mean, it's, it'll at least give you some sort of perspective on what meditation can be. I already have the link in the notes and it'll be in show notes. Yeah, and it's great. I, I tell you what, this is what I love. You know, you're a podcast. We're both podcasters. <laughs> yeah. There's an addiction to podcasts. Cause I get to meet yeah. people like you. We get to talk and it's just an amazing, just being a podcaster without making it. You don't go out to make a lot of money in podcasting cause you won't, but it's going to help you in other ways. That's right. Well, and you know, you, you hit it right on the nose, Bill. It's like, it's a, it's a relationship building thing. Right. And it's a relationship building. And, you know, with people who are listening, these, these th- yeah. hundreds of people that come on WP tonic and this show, I mean, then when you meet some of these people in person, they're like, Bill, I feel like I've known you forever. You know, right. <laughs> and that's a really cool feeling. I get sales calls all the time. We have a, a setup service that people come into lifter and I pick up the phone and, you know, we'll close these deals like super fast because they're telling me things that I said a year ago on, you know, LMS cast. And I'm like, yeah, I guess I did say that. You know, I, I don't just, even remember. But I've listened to a lot of your LMS class. I just didn't put two and two together. I listened to a lot of podcasts and it was good. Yeah. I was looking, because yeah. I was looking at Infusionsoft and what better way to get an understanding or feel when you listen to a podcast. And yeah, it's just we have good. a lot of fun there. Yeah. Chris and I have a, have a great time. Health and fitness. Health and fitness. Well, this is me preaching to myself in this moment because I need to get back into better shape. <laughs> me but, too. <laughs> I, you know, it, it, for me, running, exercise, health and fitness um, is, is is so important. If you look at it from an anthrop- anthropology perspective or a biological perspective, if you're not moving your body, your brain's just not right. going to work as well. Again, it's like another one of those kind of like laws of gravity to me. I mean, you could try and fight that, but reality is, you know, if you're not doing something, you know, you're, you're going to be missing a gear that you, in your product, you know, productivity, in your work life that you, you can't hit because your, your mind and your body's not in shape. So for me, it's uh, as I've gotten older through, like through my twenties, it's gone from, you know, am I in sports specific shape or am I in general shape? And I, and I, teeter totter between the two but you know for me now it's like basic uh strength exercises running just getting the fundamentals and keeping the fundamentals up that's really crucial my my great uncle is 103 years old um oh come back to me there you go yeah see pull-ups well and that's yeah and you you got the military background too so that's that's very uh you got a kettlebell too yeah, this is I the, got one right back here behind the surfboard. Yeah, no matter what I do, that's what I wish I had a surfboard, a cross-country skis. There you go. Well, I mean, you got to find what, what works in your environment too. But right. yeah, I got a kettlebell back here. Um, you know, uh, simple, I think it's called Simple and Sinister. Anyone who's looking for a good kettlebell routine, um, Pavel Satsulin has that, wrote that book. That's a pretty killer one. Yep. I mean, in that, you know, my. I, it's funny because I think – one of the things I've always done in all of my work environments is have a kettlebell. So my business partner and co-founder, Thomas uh, Levy, he was a big dude back in the day. And I, the startup we were working at, he'd see me at my stand-up desk doing kettlebell swings. Like, what the heck? And I was like, hey, man, I can either drink 10 cups of coffee a day or I can drink two cups of coffee a day and do 50 kettlebells every time I'm feeling tired. And the kettlebells burn calories and it gives me the same effect. So he started doing it. Well, now this guy, fast forward, he's 10 times stronger than me, Olympic weightlifter, CrossFitter, and totally is just completely changed his life, um, you know, from started from the simple kettlebell. But I mean, with that, his productivity, you know, he's leading a company like it's a really integral part of, of what we do. Actually, our name Code Box, is a nod to the CrossFit box. I love Code Box. I love the name. Yeah. Yeah. So it was originally like that's lifter. We have like this kind of outer space theme going on, but code box was really a, um, a, a nod to the CrossFit CrossFit box and lifter was actually not supposed to be a rocket ship theme. It was a lifter, like someone lifting weights, Yeah, but we flipped it. (laughs) No, I I like it. I like it. You know, I, I feel better already. I, you know, when you came on, I wasn't sure. And I stayed up late last night. I did something I normally don't watch. I watched like YouTube for an hour late at night. It's okay. I do that every night. Fail videos. I don't know why. I'm not a, I'm not proud of it, but I love it. <laughs> it was because of my interview yesterday. I had a great interview yesterday too. 
And because the interview, they, they mentioned Men Who Made America, and I just wanted to watch it. And the second one I watched is kind of depressing. <laughs> it was about is it like uh, Rock- Rockefeller and yeah. those guys. And I've read um, one of Titan? Rockefeller's huge books, I forget, uh, The Titans. I've read that that's, overseas. That's what I'm bringing to Belize with me. So The Titans? Yep. That's a great book. I got it right here. Yeah, I just bought it. I want to. It's a great read. I read it when I was in bed with a French yeah. at night in Afghanistan crazy so that's i it was awesome. a good read i love i did some great reading in afghanistan 15 minutes every night that's good you can get through a lot of books that way it was it was my only release so health and fitness we talked about that and finally a, accountability partner you throw that sort of odd you threw that in accountability partner yeah i mean i think you know accountability partners are are an interesting really i mean bag of worms in a way because if you get a bad accountability partner it's like you know having an anchor in a way Mm because you're committed to keeping accountable with someone who's not really pushing you in ways you want to be pushed or so you got to be careful with it but i think that um if you can find an accountability partner who is doing something that's not if you find someone who's parallel who's not who's not doing exactly what you're doing but they're they're pushing themselves in another industry or another space really really hard uh that's that's really crucial. And if you're lucky, your accountability partner will be about two or three steps ahead of you. So I, you know, mentors are great. I've had lots of great mentors. Accountability partners are great, but if you can get that hybrid, someone who can keep you accountable, my buddy Santiago, who runs a company called Blue Bridge Digital, um, is this for me. He's, he's about two, he's about three years younger than me, you know, is acquiring companies. He's, you know, uh, he's been to the White House a couple of times. Obama's named him one of the top uh, immigrant entrepreneurs um, in the last like five years. He was Inc.'s 30 under 30. I mean, the guy's killing it. But he gives me more relevant information because everything he says, he just went through. You know, So if it's ca- talking about fundraising, well, he just went through a massive round of fundraising. If it's talking about business acquisitions, he just acquired a consulting company. So I call Santi up, we keep, you know, keep each other accountable, and he's, he's, he's right there on the cutting edge of work. I'm entering the next chapter I'm entering in. So it's a really special thing to have a relationship like that. Um, they're hard to find. And I, I would encourage in people, I would encourage people to, to put yourself out there though, to find that, you know, right. a lot of people like don't even try. Um, and, you know, with accountability partners, odds are you're going to have a handful of, of partners that aren't the greatest. And then, you know, you'll yeah. luck out. And find, find we, we, other are. things tie into it, which we talked about on the work up a little bit partners coaching and uh, mentors and modeling. You can model somebody with just by watching them. You can model Steve Jobs if you wanted to by studying them and modeling them. Yep, absolutely. I mean, great copywriters talk about how they copy the copy of great copywriters. And that's a great yeah. example. Of that. They all fit together. So any, any thoughts? Do you have a coach? Do I have a coach? Um, a coach or, or, or do you have a, a accountability partner? I don't really have an accountability partner right now, but I have lots of mentors. Yeah. So I would say one of my I don't even know if Shane would consider himself my mentor, but I consider him a mentor. Um, Shane Perlman from Modern Tribe uh, is my okay, runner. yeah, yeah. So we we run probably once every other week, and uh, I think what I learn more about from Shane is not even so much business stuff, but it's it's work life balance. Okay, you know, for someone who I think is is uh, just a a plus human being who runs a very successful company has an amazing family life. I tell Shane, you know, you're, you who I want to be when I grow up. And so I, I love to just be around him, see how he interacts with his kids and, and balances all of it. And um, I think what I've learned from him is that you, you've got to fight for that time to play, you know, as much as you fight for time to work, so many people get obsessed with their work and they never fight for time to play. I mean, so he sets time to go run 18 miles. He's a marathon, yeah. you know, I'm actually going to go run right after you've motivated me so much, <laughs> but first I got to get yesterday's show, which is supposed to be up by eight o'clock this morning. So, Oh, got it. Well, power issues, right? Storm yeah. yeah. Issue. So any yeah, storm, blame it on the storm. Blame it on the storm. So with that, we're going to go to a break and come back with uh, how, to, how the listener can contact you, your commercial and one last question. Sounds good. Okay, Josh, coming back off the break on the last part. First of all, how can the listener contact you? You know, the probably the best way to contact me is just on Twitter at Jay Millage. Um, I'm pretty active there. Um, you can always just reach out to us at Lifter LMS. My name is Joshua at Lifter LMS. Um, you can always reach me there too. And we'll have that information on this episode 230 of Timelines of Success. 
or at timelinenetcast.com. I have a lot of different places it points into because that was one of my <laughs> early websites. It's got a long name. I'd like to keep like, short names. That's awesome. Yeah. So, Josh, how can the listener help you out? What can we do to help you in your well, business? You know, I think the first thing would be um, if you're not a part of the Lifter LMS community, we'd love for you to join us. Um, you can download our plugin at lifterlms.com. You can join our Facebook group, which is the Lifter LMS VIPs. Um, we just are right now really cultivating a great community. We already have a great community, so we'd love more people to join us there, sharing ideas around, you know, online education, um, because we all need to learn from each other. So we have the place to do that right now. And, and then, you know, uh, if there's some way that um, something that we are producing that, you know, helps you, you know, any sort of financial purchase is, is helpful when you're running an open source project too. But we've got a lot of cool things yeah. around the horizon that I think people are um, going to be really excited. Well, about. I'm going to, I'm going to pay my dues today. I'm going to join your pro Thank account. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. So no, well, you know what? I, I got a, a thousand, 10 times that value already. Awesome. Thank you. I, I know what it costs and it takes. So I appreciate it very much. Thanks. So one last question. And the question is all about um, Codebox. Mm-hmm. And the team at Codebox, first of all, how big's the team? And how do you guys how do you guys work together? And finally, how do you keep each other accountable? Yeah. By last time I counted, we had 12 people that work with us. Probably half of those are contractors that come in and out, depending on projects that we're doing. Um terms of keeping each other accountable i mean that starts with the executive team or the leadership team so that's me my business partner chris badgett and my other business partner thomas levy um we were really really focused every week to spend a minimum of a half hour just kind of hashing everything out together hashing personal stuff out emotional stuff um obviously business stuff but having that space has been really really good it's not structured um, we try, we've tried so many times to do like hardcore goal setting, but I think we're in such a, um, a Morpheus time in our business cycle that it's hard to have really, really concrete goals sometimes. Um, so it's been for us more of like categories, you know, for me, list growth, and pushing revenue are like my categories. But when it comes to like, how many Lifter LMS sales do you have per, you know, week or, or month? Um, how many, you know, cl- big client projects are you closing? We're still building the system. So the predictability of it is harder to find. Um, so we're not really there. So I think it's just giving the space to, to vent and, and question and get clarity on has been the biggest thing. And, you know, for me, it's like, why does, you know, development team goes, where's our money? You know, and that's a good question to ask and having a safe place to do that's really cool. For me, it's like, why is that taking so long to build? You know, <laughs> It always takes longer. It, right. Yeah. One thing about this business, everything takes longer than you think. Absolutely. And, and when you, and it's good, you know, with all of that, I would say another component is spending time in the same room. Like mm-hmm. we're completely distributed. I'm the only one up here in Santa Cruz. Um, you know, you've got some in Montana and LA and, and the Midwest, Pittsburgh, we got Eastern Europe, I mean, all over the globe, but spending time together and seeing how people work, help answer that question, which, you know, I'm asking is because I'm a marketer. It's like, yeah. well, why couldn't you do that yesterday? I mean, that's, that's a five minute problem. And then when I watch him do it, I was like, actually I'm wrong. That's two and a half hour. Problem. Isn't your business like registered at a, a, a Southern California Azusa yeah. or? Yeah, yeah. So we start. I used to live down there before I moved up to Santa Cruz. I spent seven years in the LA Basin and three years up here. Right, right. Well, thank you, Josh. Uh, everyone, stay on. We're going to go over to the YouTube portion and the Blab portion. Bring people on. I've got some specific questions, and if you want to listen to what I'm, I'm going to ask them on the YouTube portion, I've I've got my course going out. I want to talk about my new course? I talked to Ron. It's going to be a three echelon course. I've actually been working for about a year on some of the data. I've been working two years every day on the online business Mm -hmm. modeling and some of those things. I've been working on the real estate side with my wife too, developing some processes. And we're working with John, John, um, Jonathan Denwood, WP Tonic on a SaaS product. But uh, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to start my baby courses now and my stupid way I'm starting. So you're going to have to hear that uh, on the YouTube portion. I'm going to hit you first and let everybody else, let all the blabbers come in and they'll probably ask you the same similar questions because a lot of them are doing sort of what I'm doing too, I think up here in the audience. Sounds good. I blabbed enough there. Let me pause for a second. (laughs) Say goodbye to uh, 
podcast everyone it's it's great being on this uh show and and yeah I'd love to hear from you guys thanks again okay i opened up the seat i'm gonna have to do a lot of editing that's gonna take me twice as long to edit that show because <laughs> i so screwed up I, I first of all i i had like so much i wanted to get out of you hey i do have the course and i've talked to ron about this i want to try a three element course and i'm trying to figure out I don't have to make a lot of money. I, I need to make about $5,000 a month. I didn't have two girls who are 13 and 15 in gymnastics. And one of them is one of the top gymnasts for her age in the, in the, in the Southwest. It's great. We're going down to state in Las Vegas. So it's a lot of work for my wife and I, um, they're, they're travelers. Um, they, she came in first at Cal Plows, I think. And she won the Manhattan classic in New York, my youngest. Wow. That's her awesome. age and love. I mean, they're really good. She's a top notch gymnast, but that takes a lot of effort, skill and time. And both my wife and I are professionals, so we've really downsized um, prior to 9-11 what our income is. Mm -hmm. So for style of life, I mean, I live in a nice area, and I just – I've downsized. I'm, mm -hmm. I, I escaped Central Valley, though. Mm -hmm. So so in this course, I'm trying to develop a course, and I think the backbone should be the learning. You have to have a product to sell. About the only product I can really sell online, I can help people build websites, and I use Genesis Dynamic and – Got all the Genesis themes, uh, Genesis child themes, which I like. And I really believe in them because they just they just work. Mm -hmm. But that's a hard way to make money. It's, mm -hmm. it's non-scalable. I love helping people. I do nonprofits for free. Mm -hmm. I, I give a lot to non a couple of nonprofits. I really enjoy the people. But I'm trying to build a course. Do I start my first course? Like I'm trying to do an introduction. First, you're a podcaster. I'm a podcaster. But I think podcasting is you shouldn't have to pay $1,000 to learn how to podcast. Yeah. So I want to get I want to get a system that's reasonable. I used to use um, I think you probably guys do call recorder and Skype, which is a, would give us beautiful pictures, great sound. But I've I started using this Blab because it's more it brings the community together. Mm -hmm. it doesn't give us great a sound for the podcast, but I've got a system and a trick. So I'm trying to introduce. I don't want to call it Blab like the five dollar Blab course, but like an introduction to online communications. And I'm a big believer that you should never start a podcast first. You should start. Just a blab, record it, listen to it, maybe put it up on YouTube and make a series. And maybe once you're comfortable, start that podcast. Because too many people start podcasts, three three episodes later, they, they stop. A thousand yeah. a week start, a thousand a week fail. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the thing that I would say is whatever you're doing online, the most important thing is actually to start with list, list building uh, and getting yeah. an audience, curating an audience, getting permission to get inside their inbox is going right. to make anything you do so much easier. And even just getting feedback is easier if you do that. So it's it's really, really important to do that. John, John. made it. I, I see, I see uh, this, I see John's uh, favorite con or favorite con is icon, whatever it is. And I think of Marcus Kaus. I don't know why. He seems to be the name for us for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why I do that. I saw Marcus Kaus. My not. show, he's just more, he's more out there in the world than me. I've accidentally even emailed a meme to email you too. That's all right. So, nice to John, meet you, Josh. You? Nice to meet you, John. Marcus did a great you. review of your uh, plugin. Yeah, Marcus is a good man, and it's fun to talk to them over at uh, it's WB Tavern, I think. Yeah, hey, WB Jonathan Tavern. Klein. That's why Marcus comes up more than I do because he's Jonathan. Klein, there. We can answer the question right now to get you on WP Tonic. We got to talk to Jonathan. I'm so screwed up right now. I could look at my schedule. I, this weekend, hey, Jonathan, can we bring uh, Josh up this weekend? Because this is like the only weekend he's available on Saturday. There's Jonathan. Uh oh, this is scary. Oh my gosh, he's back. Uh -oh. Hey, Jonathan. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> the secret guy. He's down in Carson City in his cool. his bunker. Are you down in the, Where are you, Jonathan? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm in Reno at the, oh. at the Abbey Agency. Oh, that's a big marketing agency. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest for Reno. That's the big one. Nice. Um, second biggest. What's the biggest? Um, Noble Studios. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Noble Studios. The big yeah, let's have um, that'd be great because we are. Um, yeah, that that works, doesn't it? I'm looking at our schedule. I thought I can't tell. Like something happened this weekend. I know. Well, Rebecca Gills can't. Um, she right, deals, tomorrow, so she's we saying. can't do the interview tomorrow. I know. I got Joshua saying he's canceling. I within five minutes of each other, Rebecca Gills comes up, and we never get cancellation very seldom. Joshua's got a tree and no power. <laughs> and Rebecca's sick. Yeah. So, are you free for coming on this Saturday? Yeah, I'm gonna double check. Nine o'clock. It's a good one. Nine a.m. Let Let me confirm with you after this call. 
Yes, we get a lot of people in that one, and a lot of people come up on Blab too. And then what we do is we review websites afterward for a few minutes. That's awesome. We could review like other people's uh, well, learning well, management courses. It's so on more than a few minutes, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, we do the. It's a half hour podcast supposedly, and then we talk. Then we go on the YouTube, and then we um we we could review like uh, other courses, people's courses that are online. Absolutely, that would be cool. That'd be good. That'd be for great. Sure. So John, let's John. So hope Saturday, be there Saturday, be good. Yeah, yeah, I'll definitely confirm after we get off that'd here. Be, that'd, be that'd be great, John. Good. Yeah, thank you guys for the offer. John, what are your questions? Are you building a course, John? Me? No, not at the moment. I'm. Uh, I had high hopes of doing things like that, uh, but uh, I've had to set those aside for the WP plugin site due to uh, having to earn a living. I know, isn't that painful? <laughs> I hate the. Idea. It's, it's terrible. Such it's pain, shocking, so. isn't it? I get I get one day a week devoted to the WP plugin site, and then I have to take care of all my clients. Been a busy couple of months for me. Had to settle back into working for a living and uh, move my office. What? Terrible. Yeah. These clients are awful, aren't they? I know they just want they want work before they give you money. I can't understand <laughs> it. I get paid up front, John. <laughs> well, you know. I'm a little different. I like to make sure they're happy. The way would they pay me? I have no fear of it ever being charged they make them back. Happy, but they pay up front. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of building a product and selling it and marketing it. And yeah, working on it. Yeah. Oh, you don't want to work on it. Marcus is doing that. Though. Marcus that is building big. himself a great product. Yeah, yeah. Product. He's building a membership site. Well, I believe know, he's me, using Lifter LMS. Awesome. For me, building a product is just getting good on uh, ScreenFlow and building good content and thinking about it, modeling it, and that's a lot of work in itself being specializing in those areas yeah you got to chip away you, you got to out, outline it and then chip away at it i always just say chunk it down you know bring it into smaller pieces and then start knocking it out so what do you oh, what yeah. do you actually do in the company josh are you the uh, developer or no i'm focused on sales and marketing and our partnerships really i mean a lot of my time uh day to day is focused on our Codebox, our agency. So working with our clientele there, and we've been building high-end learning management systems for three years there. So custom projects, all custom for you know, small businesses, enterprises, colleges, universities. So out of those that those projects is where Lifter came from because we saw this wave happening in the WordPress space and said, you know, it wouldn't be that difficult for us to develop a plugin because a lot of the things that we've already built for clients we can reconfigure down into a plugin. Right. So. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I manage those relationships and the, the agency and then, uh, the sales and marketing for lifter and working on partnerships, um, for everything we're doing there. Well, that'd be great because our monthly, we normally have a monthly topic and this month is how to use WordPress to make money online. Yeah. Um, so we're, we've got another guest next week, um, who advises startups, but cool. they use utilizing WordPress as a framework nice um not as a not traditionally just as a marketing website but they also build in the application on the wordpress platform mm -hmm. so she advises a few companies in las vegas and nationally so she's coming on next week That's so cool. i think if you can make it on saturday that kind of fits in is, is she calling in from las vegas yes I'm going to be down in Las Vegas that week. Remember? We're yeah, well, that's, we need to discuss if we can handle that, don't we, Bill? Yeah, I mean, I could he's go rolling. He's He's leaving his bunker, folks. <laughs> he's, he's, his wife's actually leave. He doesn't actually leave that area. I don't think he actually... Have you, uh, you haven't actually been out for that. Just to, actually, pick, just to pick up my, my kettlebell. Oh. Just sitting in the cave. Yeah. He just lives there. I don't think he ever leaves the area. Yeah, I'm stuck in this room. <laughs> well, I, nice. I, hopefully we go. Um, so um, Bill will be able to give you my email, which is simple. It's jonathan at wp-tonic.com. Okay. Um, and hopefully you can make it on Saturday. It sounds like we could have a good chat, doesn't it? Yeah, it would be fantastic. Yeah, I'll definitely contact you uh, shortly here. It'd be fun. Thank you for the offer. So, John, you, you know, how's it going? The plug got any, got any plugins? <laughs> uh, actually, I do. I just uh, preparing up a couple for uh, next week's show. Uh, one of them would be uh, Comet uh, Comet Cash, which uh, formerly known as Zen Cash and uh, Quick Cash. 
Very nice plugin. I was actually surprised. I'm not a big uh, caching uh, plugin user, but uh, recent things with a couple of my uh, couple of my sites on network uh, WPMU uh, required uh, me to speed them up, and the easiest way to do it was with a uh, plugin. Oh. I love you, John, because that that's the one that yeah. I use on all my websites. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I'll listen to the show when it comes out. I'm going to get on a soapbox about Zendesk. <laughs> Because uh, they were rather irritating. Or Zendesk? Is, it, is that? Is it, well, they're the ones that forced uh, Zencash to change their name. Oh, really? Along with uh, several other uh, companies that have used the name Zen in uh, products. I wonder if the Zencaster <laughs> people got any flack. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've caught in a little bit of it. Anyway, it was just, it was a rather inter interesting well, you know read. When I see those, I get on a soapbox. Obviously, so. um, I don't know all the ins and outs of it. Easy, but you do realize that it was. I'm only surmising this is that yeah. if you have a if you have um your intellectual legal advice if you don't defend your oh I know well, if you don't defend you can lose it but the thing is is it's it's a matter of it's a matter of insanity it, to me but anyway it, it's all irrelevant it, uh, uh, ignore this soapbox you can listen to it when you hear my show well, are, <laughs> it'll be a short you are right but that's what they say they always say that to the management if yeah. you, and they scare them into actions like this because they say if you don't well, do it you'll you you know you won't be able to defend it well, you can always defend it. It's a matter of how much money do you have to defend something like that. Is is it worth defending? Like with with uh, Comic Cash, they looked at the numbers and they thought we could defend it and probably win. But the money's yeah. better spent in development. Exactly. You know, it's it's a, it's a bit of a pain. It's kind of hard when you get attached to a name and you got to let go of it, and then you go on and you got to force all your clients to change out the plugin because of a name change. It's a bit of a pain that way. It can cost you some client base, but in the end, you eventually you'll get to a name that nobody yet owns. Mm -hmm. And then you're, and then you're set. It, was, so, it was a bit painful, but actually I think the new name is quite good actually. Oh, I like the name. I preferred the Zen name. It was more, it, it was more relevant to the way the plugin works. I mean, the plugin is very fantastic in how it works. You know, because it was very easy. And as far as caching plugins, it's of all the ones I've tested in the past, it's probably the best one I've used in a long time. Oh, great. So, no, I, I, there was some, it was a good choice for my matters. I've got to go, folks. All right, Jonathan. Uh, nice seeing you, Jonathan. Nice seeing you, John. See ya. Back. He's in, he's in Reno. He gets out quite a bit more than I do now. Yeah. <laughs> Not me. I don't get out at all anymore, except when I'm going running. That's good. That's good. There's Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi. Mike. How are you? He's a big, black, good blabber. Good, Mike. How are you, my friend? I got a hey, face. How's it going? You're good. You're fine. Hi, Josh. You may mention the man uh, I met, but I really want to have a look at uh, a attended free trial. What was that game? Sorry, I'm having problems with my audio. Drop the question in there, Mike, and we'll get it down. Just drop it in. It'll be good. Uh, okay, I will. Thanks. Have a great day, guys. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Appreciate Mike. it. We'll get that. We can stay on. We'll get that yeah. question. Hey, um, Josh, uh, I yeah. do. Uh, just going on types of courses to get going. Um, what's a good course to, uh, Mike? Thanks, Mike. I appreciate it. We're looking for your question. What is a, a good way to start it, uh, pricing? We'll talk about pricing and courses, quality courses. Yeah, Getting well, everyone underprices their course. That's just, you know, a lot of teachers have issues charging, I think, what their courses are worth. Really? Um, yeah, because, you know, everyone thinks they have to be like Udemy, so they have to do yeah. a cheap course. But the reality is you should start to think about what's the ascension look like. I mean, a cheap course is fine, but you're not going to make money. I mean, you're not going to you know, you're not going to hit a $5,000 mark with a $5 course. Right. So no, no, no. What's no, the ascension like lead magnet? Sure. Yeah. In that case, that's a little, you know, a little different, but I think pricing a course for me um, really comes down to being honest around the value that I'm providing and the outcome that's achievable. If people follow what I'm teaching to mm -hmm. a teacher. Um, and that's more for process oriented courses, which is what I teach primarily. If it's a behavior change course, which is a totally different, style of course that would be something like maybe how to wake up early or 
um, how to lose weight. Um, you know, what's the level of difficulty for someone to follow that information and actually re- achieve that result? Uh, you know, what's the market conditions? What are the, what are people selling the course for in that market? So, you know, you've got in the weight loss market, I think, you know, average course price is probably around $49, 39, 30, 29 to 49, but the market's massive and mm-hmm. people are rabid in that market and buy things all the time without completing them. So, Knowing that, what if you could charge two ninety nine, but you have a completion guarantee because you're going to have some sort of blended learning component or something like that? So, you know, it's there's a lot of factors to consider, but I think really outlining um, the outcome and and how difficult is it for someone to get there? That that's really an interesting exercise. Most people don't do that. They're just going to be like, well, you know, John Lee Dumas's podcasting course was two grand and seven or 700 yeah. now or whatever 14 i think 14 drops down to like a thousand or something podcast. Sure, so, yeah, no, but now it's so, an annual too it's not life yeah so then it's like okay well what am i doing that he's not doing i mean yeah his I, his, his lms is horrible you know, he's, john you know, you know you know oh yeah he uses uh infusion saw right? yeah he uses uh what's it called uh that what i know what you're talking about because i've looked at them all i know exactly customer hub it's expensive too. Yeah, it's a joke. Like 70. <laughs> By the way, it's funny when you were uh, when you went to a freemium model, and I'm I've been working like I said for several months on I, I know just about all the LMSs, not all of them. There's tons of them out there, but I know the the best ones. And um, I had this one guy, you know, eighty percent of its sales, calling me like every week, wanting three hundred bucks a month to do their SaaS LMS. And I said, well, you know, I, it's a little bit too expensive for me, and I don't have the clientele, I don't have the numbers. And by the way, I'm looking at Lifter LMS. Yeah, have you looked at it? <laughs> <laughs> and this was back yeah. when you were like 150 bucks or something like that. I think people are a little, uh, they're definitely some competition that we have that's a little shaky right now. They, they call me, they have, want bucks. Yeah, I mean, we, wow. They, yeah, they we, call me and say, hey, we're just dropping the price uh, in our new model. We're going to 100 a month. Yeah. So the question I would have for them is like, why? Yeah. Because- like, I mean, that is massive drop. Can you improve the product for that? You know, yeah. like it, it's a whole different, it's a different bag of worms when you're in the open source space, you know, than a SaaS that ha- holds all the code behind the scenes. Yeah. I, that's another thing I like about your product. I control everything. I control the data. Yeah. The code too. I mean, rip it apart, reconfigure it, add on to it, modify it. It's all there. I was hoping Michael dropped that question. And do you see his question? I don't see his question. No, I haven't seen Michael, it come we'll up take yet. Your time, drop that in so we can get to it. But uh, so pricing is a challenge. Um, uh, John Lee Dumas is probably one of the more successful uh, podcasters, I would say. There's a lot of people with more relevant content and better training skills, should I say. Mm-hmm. But John probably had that team together and had the um, – he's an interesting study in himself. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he's definitely not overnight. He, he worked on it for a long What's time. What's up, guys? Hey, where are you from, Michael? West Lafayette, Indiana, baby. Oh, there Land you go. of the Lincoln. What? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a fisher's boy. I grew up in Indiana. Oh, no shit? Yeah. I've never been to Fisher's, actually, but I've heard of it. Yeah, north side of Indianapolis, but lo- lots of yeah, friends yeah. went to Purdue, so I've been to West Oh, Lafayette. yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at, baby, you know? <laughs> zero, zero days on Blab. What do you do? Uh, well, I'm a student uh, in engineering. Good. Uh, I specialize in soil and water management. You could say I'm a uh, Jesus if you wanted to, but I'll leave that up to you. So do you know about learning management systems online material? Of course. Like uh, I took an online course once in um, statistics, mm-hmm. and we had to uh, we had to uh, do a lot of management online stuff. Yep. <laughs> Even my uh, daughter in eighth grade is using uh, Office 365, and she's doing. Really- oh yeah, oh yeah. We just uh, Purdue actually just upgraded to Office 365 for all their. Yeah. Like all the students now get Office 365 for free. Josh, that's an interesting study. The uh, the you know the Google. And I forget, but, uh, yeah, Google and. Uh, Look at that! Isn't it a beautiful day out? It's gorgeous. No God damn. For real though, it's like in the 60s today. 
Google, yeah. anyway, Google Apps and Office 365. It's interesting to see both in the schools and the kids. Hey, Michael, I'm going to push you off your little noise now. We're, right, we're hitting no, the- come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to stay on topic. brother. All right, we'll stay on topic. I'll stay on topic. Okay, we're going to stay on top. We're talking about learning management systems. Since you're in college, I guess they have affected you. What You use them a lot right now in school, right? I do. I do. Um, have you heard of Blackboard? I have. Yep. I have. Yep, that's a learning management system, right? Yeah, it's old school. Oh, yeah. It's, it's pretty old, but I mean, I like it just because it's simple, I think. That's the problem. A lot of these online learning systems are so... So you get used to them, you know, it's almost a hindrance to your learning. Yeah, absolutely. Josh, they're they're, they're robust. They're complicated. Josh, that's a good, interesting thing because your your podcast, I like WordPress and it's open source. It can evolve. But you do have some competition at the the higher levels. You've got Adobe Edition, Adobe. You've got Microsoft. And, of course, you've got uh, Google. (laughs) Yeah. I mean – yeah, those you know those aren't necessarily direct competitors because they're not LMSs, but you got Blackboard, PeopleSoft, a bunch of others. Yeah, but you, yeah, they're not not exactly the uh, you know we're not that's not really our focus. If someone wanted us to build that, we could, but that would be a lot of custom development. This would be a large project. Mm. But hey, Josh, got a question for you. When you switched from uh, full premium to uh, the freemium model, how did that improve your business? Well, I mean, for one. It, it, just brought in a lot more leads for our setup services and our custom development and then you know more revenue through our extension cells so when you give something away for free that, that that's that yeah. valuable um, it just gives you more people to talk to and it helps us segment too so not everyone who comes to our site is created equal we've got prospects we have users people who download yeah. our plugin and then we have customers people who've spent money with us so uh, the reason I was asking was uh, it was something I noticed several years ago about how plugins were evolving. And I made mention of it lots of times in my shows, but I was wondering, you know, because a lot of times I see a plugin such as yours, it was a premium model, and then I'm seeing more and more uh, authors moving from premium, dropping back to a freemium model. Uh, a calendar I regularly use is doing that now. They're dropping back to a freemium model and adding a service as uh, a software mm-hmm. component to it. So I'm just I'm just wondering how this is making a big difference in the industry and what's what you might see the future future yeah, of I mean, it is. The reality is with the WordPress space, it's not easy to make money in the WordPress space yeah. with a plugin. It's just not. I mean, you're you're working in an open source environment. So just the mindset is everything needs to be free straight away. So you've got to get right. creative on how you make money. And you also have to get in front of people. You got to get eyeballs, you know. And for us, the 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 easiest way to do that was to make our core plugin free. Now our business model I think is um a little different because we have a pretty strong backbone and we do a lot of client services. It gives us a lot of flexibility. I mean, if you were just doing plugins, there's no way we could make it. Um, You're doing, you're doing the courses, training, you're expanding. How's Chris now? Chris is traveling right now. Where's he today? I have no idea. He's in the trailer. Last time we interviewed him up at Montana heading South. For sure. Bill, I got a hard stop here coming up. So thanks Josh. I would love to to keep talking, but I got to get some, Get going. Hey, tentatively Sunday, Sunday hey. Pacific time, nine a.m. Pacific. John Sunday, Sunday, not Saturday. Excuse me, Saturday, Saturday, nine p.m. Pacific. Nine p.m. Uh, okay. Nine. Stop. 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 Nine a.m. I'm thinking okay. Sunday. I'm. I'm like <laughs> my head's all over the place. Sunday we do a late show, and it's in politics. And then nine a.m. on Saturday morning we do WP Tonic. That cool. does have a lot of WordPress folks. I mean, that's got. A lot, of, a lot of people will, will get that show. And Saturday has yeah. been a great day. It's a lot of live interaction. That's cool. Well, let, let me check with that, and then we'll see. If I can't do it before Belize, I'll do it after. Thanks, and thanks for the um, Have you sort of we were, uh, non-conformative today. It's a different kind of show. I was uh, I think it was my beauty rest last night, so I appreciate you coming on today. Happy the tree it's was fixed. Good. I should have yeah. called you. Lesson is I should have called you because I remember we canceled went back and forth, and I thought, well, how did it, how did it re re <laughs> reschedule for the same time so it's all good well you guys have a great day and, and thank you for uh thanks josh come on and i'm gonna let i'm gonna hang up for thanks. you okay because i, I right. uh, let me double check something real fast you're a, a temporary you're a host right now and what i'll do is load you on your under your blab and i'm gonna hang up okay for you okay so i'll kick you off say bye
See you guys. Bye. Hey, John, care, just a second update. What do you, we can finish up. It's been a while since your show. What you are, yeah. you did, <laughs> I know you didn't get that um, like crowdfunding element. That's okay. It did. I I had high hopes, but uh, I knew the possibility existed that it wouldn't occur. But it gave me a gauge on what my audience would support, and it also allowed me to reevaluate everything that I wanted to do for the show. And now, what I've done with it is I've backed down. I dedicate one day a week to my podcast, and uh, dedicate one day a week to the uh, website. And so what will happen is what I'd hoped to do in three to four months now might take me a year, year and a half, but I'll still eventually get there. You know, you know I, I did an experiment with doing a show every day, which I've done before. And it's actually, yeah. I got it down so I can do it pretty fast. I mean, it's, you know, I'm trying, yeah. if you look at my schedule, we're only doing one morning show now and I'm transitioning into the uh, afternoon. So as long as you get up yeah. early and work hard and then in the afternoon you do the show and then you, you, you edit it and you get it up that night. Uh, my problem is, is I spend uh, approximately 60 to 70% of my time at home mm -hmm. with my kids. And uh, like the next two weeks are going to be rough on me because they're home for spring break. So they'll be home all day mm -hmm. and being six and nine or actually seven and nine years old now is they're just not quite old enough to just boot them out entirely on their own. So I have to spend time with them. So I spend a lot of my time. I do most of my work between 6 a.m. and uh, 11 a.m. And then after that, I'm taking care of all the family stuff. That I'll say my, my wife and I both worked. And when our kids were little, we made pretty good money. And I tell you what, in high school, it's been yeah. Yeah, with 13 and 15-year-old girls. It's been yeah. uh, with gymnastics. It's hard they're, 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 they're more expensive oh, they're at that too. point. They're, they're, <laughs> Yeah, they, they become more expensive, but you have more time on your hands to do the things yes. you want to do. And now I raised, I've got a 28 year old now. So I've already raised yeah. one. So I know what happens when they hit teenagehood. It's just getting to that point where I'm at that in between my point now. My son's That's like okay. 29. My girls are 15 and 13. Girls are more expensive, but my son was Levi's and, and t shirt and wrestling <laughs> and sports. He did all yeah. the sports. They're all high school sports, which are expensive because they're high school. My, my daughter's an artist, so she was rather, uh, rather costly. In my that my area. thirteen year old's an excellent artist. You can see the stuff back there. It's yeah. A little bit of it. You can't. Oh, that's hers. Oh, okay, that's nice, nice work. If you look at my Facebook site, that's yeah. hers. This is like that's like three or four years ago too. You can't see. Yeah. But um, she just got into something called the Red House, which is an academy school here in Reno. We yeah. have uh, academy schools. We have the regular high schools, and then they've got like seven or eight academy schools. What's that? That's my daughter's creation. That's that's the uh, the critter. My daughter is really into Turns abstract the other direction. art. He likes the back of it, isn't it? There we go. There's, oh, I, okay. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, the side. That's nice. How old is <laughs> this? This is about uh, ten years old now. She made it for oh, me in high school. Is it your older daughter? Yeah, my older daughter. I only okay. have one daughter. She and I have one sons, daughter and two, two sons. sons. Okay. So, yeah. My sons are my sons. The young, my uh, daughter's uh, old, and I've got two grandchildren from How her already. How old are your already. sons? Six and nine, or seven oh, and nine. Boy. Sorry, seven oh, and nine. Boy. They're they're a blast yeah. in high school. They're a blast. They the are. Boys are blast in high school. They are. I love. I my my son ran his first five k race with uh, me and his mom well, the good. other day. That's good too. That is sort of so my oldest. Get him into get him into activities that it's he like enjoys. It's like having a buddy to keep you in shape. I still go running with my son. He wipes wipe me out though. Like, oh, my kid! Uh, my kid kicked my butt on. Never forget my son said, uh, "You're running like an old man." <laughs> <laughs> like ten years ago too. Yeah. Well, nothing like kids to help make you feel old. Hey, my, Michael, I just dropped the link in there. It was Headspace that. Uh, but, but Joshua talked about, I was a little out of it in Joshua's thing. I, I I did something last night. I just like hit the wall and I went and watched YouTube and I didn't get my show. My mm. show will be up last night's show will be up in like in an hour. It's almost done. It's just, I just, I just wanted to go because they mentioned a minute may American. It wasn't, I wasn't overly impressed with the, uh, it wasn't a positive message. No. It was okay. I'll have to watch it more. It was more ruthless, ruthless people who were running entrepreneurs, running the businesses you know, the steel, the big magnets and all that. But uh, yeah, we'll be up um, Saturday, Josh. I, I am trying to get, I did a course. I'm trying to get a quick course up. I, 
I'm really launching. Have you, you've never launched a course, have you? No, I haven't launched oh, so one much yet. To do. I will. I've got two areas I'm dealing with. Like I'm doing a regular weekly blab now, but it's not under my name. It's under my uh, fitness mm -hmm. website. And uh, that one there, as we grow the uh, fitness website, I imagine we'll start adding mm -hmm. courses to it and uh, training plans for people. Dave Jackson but, told uh, me that John Lee Dumas called him and he, um, I'm going to actually unrecord names. Yeah. The difference between success and not success of any podcaster is marketing. I mean, I made, I've been doing my show for five years mm -hmm. and it's not been a major success and it's been due to my lack of marketing, which is going to be changing this year. And it's like this podcaster is like, WP Tonic, that show's only been around, what, a year, year mm -hmm. and a half? No, it's about, I don't know. Yeah, 80 shows. And, and it's, it's, exceeded what my, it's exceeded what I've already done, what I've done in the market already. And it's due to the marketing and getting out there. Like, personally, I'm, I'm an introvert. I, I hide. It's like I've hidden from the internet. I've been online since the, well, the early 90s. But nobody knew I existed until a couple of years ago when I finally decided to stick my neck out and see what happened. And that's all it is. It's marketing. That's the difference between success and failure is marketing. Yep. Yep. I, I know. I, well, I think you can't have just garbage. You got to have something. No, you got to have something. You got to have something. If you've got a halfway decent product and there's a lot of halfway decent products and there's, there's products that are extremely good that I discover. And there's products that are so, so that are pretty much the same product, but the difference between the successful one and the unsuccessful one I've noticed is marketing. Who does a better job of marketing? Who's made the better connections? Who's stuck their neck out further to get noticed by the internet? Mm -hmm. And that's what it takes. You just got to stick yourself out there. Let me finish this real fast. I'm uh, not just doing it, Mac. But you know, I, there's more than just doing it. Uh, I've been doing things for a long time and it hasn't quite made success. It's a matter of getting people to notice your success. I have a meetup group with 600 people in it here. And I've got another yep. meetup group where they just changed the name. Um, it's, it's based off WordPress and it's got about 180, 90 people, but it's only a meetup. It's really nothing, but it's it, that face to face thing. It's, I don't yeah. know. I, I'm, it's, I'm torn on the face to face. The traditional businesses are face to face brick and mortar. I'm still big on the face to face myself. Anyway, anytime, anywhere I can, I prefer to meet people one on one, two, three small groups. Uh, that's how I got started with my, with my development business here locally was, uh, doing face to face. Yeah. Well, and you can go, I can go out right now and try to, you know, build relatively inexpensive websites for folks. But I, yep. I, I try to go out and teach people how to build websites locally. Mm -hmm. you just get the framework started. I like Genesis. Yeah. And I used to do that. But a lot of people don't want to do that. It's really weird. Uh, they don't I used to, to, I used to teach courses here in Victoria on how to, on how to use WordPress. Yeah. And I taught them for a couple of years, but then when the online market took off, instead of, jumping on that and developing my courses there. I just continued doing my own work yeah. and just let it go. So this is what John I, Lee Dumas, I think he focused in on just that. I think he must have yeah. ahead of time. He, he saw, he, he saw the area to focus and he focused. He did it ahead of time. He wrote that book. Yeah. He, wrote, he wrote his book. First. Yeah. He got the interviews. That, so that's, that's what it takes. Podcasting. I mean, he just sold Chris Ravencraft was doing it too, but he's doing it differently. That, that bigger, you know Chris Ravencraft, right? Um, I know who he is. I've never podcast. never talked to him. He's just podcasting. Yeah, he's. Uh, I know. I know who. I know who he is, and I've heard uh, one or two of his shows. He's not someone I regularly listen to. No, I ha I I can't do his podcast. <laughs> just, there's no. They're like they're like he does the like the TV shows, the reviews. Mm -hmm. I'm not into that. I, I like yeah. the tech side. I did a show. Um, just messing around. I had an opening. I just took a. I just took. Um, some notes and searched online and dug into um, targeting. We, we do have a show called, this is a terrible name called uh, weekly scam. We, oh, Hey, that'd be interesting. Weekly scam.com. And we talk about all the ways to get scammed online, but it's also about how you can make money online. It's real easy when you get into the business. I think everyone's on, even when you're in the business, you got to watch all your, um, all, all your accounts and people charging them and they add up. Oh, yeah. I've got like eight recurring accounts. And, oh yeah, and you got like get a credit card that you know you can put a limit on, so it doesn't they don't tag it. I yep. just I just bought an old plug-in that I didn't mean to buy yesterday. It recurred, you know. So now I got to go back and I I, oh, con yeah. I contacted people. 
it happens. The reoccurring things go on forever. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I use, I use PayPal for everything I do. Because if it's a reoccurring charge, I review those charges once every couple of months to see what I'm still paying out, and whether it's something I want to keep. Because that's the only place I know where if you've got a reoccurring charge, you can cancel it yourself. Really? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, using a credit card, it's so hard to cancel a recurring charge because you got to get them to cancel it for you. I use American Express, which is kind of nice, American Express Gold yeah. Card. But still, you got to be careful. You know, there's another way to Bank of America and Wells Fargo now. You can generate a separate credit card number for your accounts and then Ooh. put a limit on it. And I like that. So, oh, that's nice. That's useful. Finding ways to con finding ways to control the expenses. That's the big thing to do. Yeah. Um, uh, Michael had a point down there. So many people have great ideas, but just don't do it. But if, oh, yeah. if you just take the bull by the horns and do it. There's other oh, yeah. things too, though. You've got to um, balance money and income, and family. I money, mean, income, time. Well, I have an unlimited number of ideas popping out of my head at any given point in time, and I wish I could act on all. Time and money. That's it. Time and money. And family. And then you throw your family in there too, which it's takes, still time. Which takes that still time comes, and money. That still comes down to time and money. Everything comes down to time and money. It mostly comes down to time because there's a lot of things you can do on very little money, but it's time. Yeah. And and then the quality. So anyway, I think I don't know. I've got these groups. I went too many different directions. Actually, when I got in the military, I went nuts. Like I finished uh, Toastmasters. Um that they don't have yet to make the ideas turn into a tangible product. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. I mean, the I, internet's a great resource though, for getting the expertise. All you got to do is know how to read. Yeah. But you got to find it too. You got to stack it. You know, yeah. another thing I've thought about too, that's important is you can't listen to everybody. Oh, no. You got to find one or two people you trust because mm -hmm. I'll be working on something and something, oh, that's, that's terrible. And same thing in politics, you know, <laughs> maybe it's not terrible. Maybe I just need to launch it and see what the people think. That's pretty much it, man. Stick it out there and see what happens. Yeah. And see what the people think. And then to build a list, or how are you doing on your list building? Mine, it's going along pretty decently, you know, um, for the longest time it didn't do well. And then I added to my websites, the uh, dreaded pop-up and all of a sudden my list climbed exponentially. Hey, you can help me finish up this show. If Josh didn't, I wasn't sure Josh was coming on today. Mm -hmm. And it was going to be CRM. I was going to do, is it going to be CRM? That's Con interesting. Content relation management. Oh, Photoshop just came up. That was weird. Photos, that's strange. Uh, CRM. You know, there's a, apparently there's a, there's some viruses going around from Mac right now. So CRM, um, email autoresponders, email service protocol marketing service products, email response management, email management systems, Aweber. <clears throat> I used to have an Aweber MailChimp. I do not, nonprofits, yeah. I do MailChimp. I use MailChimp. Yeah. For, but I am, I actually have been on uh, Infusionsoft for a while. Yeah. I spent hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on Infusionsoft. Yeah, Marcus used Infusionsoft. And their API doesn't integrate well with a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's a tough yeah, I, I hear them complain about that every time we um, do a show. <laughs> Why are so many people still on Infusionsoft? I have no idea. Maybe they've got locked into the ecosystem. The other thing, too, is, you know, they have, is Marcus isn't a certified partner, is he, by any chance? Not that I'm aware of, no. You go through certified partner training, it costs a lot of money. Yeah. yeah 4000 minimum, I know of. I, 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 know, I know he's done a lot of work with Infusionsoft. He might be a certified partner. Yeah. But they lock him in. But uh, I just, uh, I still can go back. I, I'm leaving Infusionsoft after almost a year and a half. Yeah. Because it just doesn't pencil out. So I'm not sure where I'm going to go, though. How do you like MailChimp? I like it very well. Um, it's, it's easy enough to use for a small, medium-sized list. I haven't got a massive list yet, so I don't yeah. know. My favorite thing about it is the templating system that feeds out automatically through the RSS. Mm -hmm. I set up a template that uh, once a week, whether I remember it or not, it goes through and any new posts I put on the site, it automatically feeds them out as an email. I didn't know you could do that. You can template that email. Yeah, you can template that email so it goes out once a week as a uh, automatic feed or even daily if you were so inclined. But doing more than once a week, you usually annoy your list. Yeah, no, I you don't want to do it more than once a week. So, but yeah, uh, I, it's been great. Um, 
you know, the list has grown, it's shrunk, it's grown, it's shrunk, you know, it's, but it's uh, on the whole, it's continuing to grow. How do you and clean up your list? It self cleans. You can do it, that. Well, people, people unsubscribe from it. And uh, I believe it's set up that if an email bounces more than a couple of times, it's uh, they're automatically deleted from the list. I've got a nonprofit. I don't think that's happening. You got that star rating system. I must have not have yeah. that, right? a couple of them. I've played around okay. for my newbie freebium and the nonprofits. I had this I, one profit. You see, they've, they've tripled their money. They're not a huge company, but they've got like 12. They started out with five. Yeah. They got 12. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to have to run my cable company. Just got here to install a new modem for me. Okay. So, uh, is it going to make things great? Better? Well, yeah, it'll make things better because I moved my office home. So I've been using my home internet connection for everything. Your last, this is a good connection. I think we did your show months ago um, yeah. from your home and this and has actually come out pretty it's well. It's an excellent connection, but what happens is the home one uses a lot of other bandwidth for other things. So I've got to get all my compute, all my work computers on its own bandwidth. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, thanks, John. Uh, May come right. Saturday um, after the question and answer portion. I'll try and do that. Thanks. Take care. Thanks for having me here, Bill. Yeah. Take care. Jonathan Denwood will come up for a second. Go okay. over stuff. Hey, Jonathan, want to go over anything? Can we finish up here? There he is. Man, I was totally unprepared this morning. Yeah, you lose it, aren't you, Bill? I didn't think Josh was going to be there. It's totally. I, I was like all over the place. I was up late, didn't get much sleep. I didn't get my show out last night. I mean, the show is almost ready to go out. I literally got a day behind in the shows and I was going to get caught up yesterday and I got a phone call before the show. So I, I, uh, looks like I'm going to leave infusion soft. Um, I think you've, uh, I, Josh, Josh is, Josh doesn't, they're, they're leaving it. And well, he doesn't show. We keep having the same conversation about that. Don't we, Bill? It works. I mean, it does work for me, yeah. but I don't think it's the best. I mean, it's I a, it, I'll restate what I said to you. Um, a couple of days ago for the right size mm -hmm. for the right um you got to have somebody working it too well no the thing is you're compare it's the reason why they why they still do well bill is at a certain level of necessary functionality they're actually one of the cheaper products yeah, yeah, I agree. And the certified trainer program, I think, is good too. Yes, the the certified um, training is good, but at a certain level of com on functionality, they're actually one of the cheaper mo products yeah. in the market. Um, but unless you need that degree of functionality, they're they're not the right choice. Initially, no, I just stick with Aweber or something basic. Yeah, there's a, there's there's drip. There's that other one that's come out. I keep forgetting. There, there's, there's um, what the reason why a lot of people bought into them was until about about eighteen months ago. If you wanted to do drip marketing in a sophisticated manner, Wait. they were one of the cheapest solutions you could buy into. Yeah, but there's a number. There's a number of solutions now that deal with that have a sophisticated campaign. Campaign Monitor now has a, a pretty robust drip marketing functionality and built into it. Well, Josh mentioned somebody today. When I get the show notes, I'll pull them back up that they're using. They're not using. Um, uh, they're, they're using somebody else now. You know, but it's like a lot of things, Bill. It, it's just uh, everything's getting more hotter. There's more solutions. Software yeah. developments become a lot easier. There's just a lot, lot more competition. But Infusionsoft is still, if um, one of the things which I don't agree with, which was their choice, is they they decided to go down the membership e-commerce route. Uh, instead of concentrating on their core um, functionality, mm -hmm. which uh, they, they, they they attempted to become a much broader solution in areas which they don't have enormous competence in, which I, I which is their choice. But I I think resource. See, it's a bit like what you were saying about the um, form editor. You say it's quite. I 
it's, it's old. old. It's yeah. old. Well, that's well. They decided to utilize internal resources upon their their membership yeah. and e-commerce platform, which um, which was their choice. But um, th there's been a payoff on that, and the the payoff is some of their core functionality hasn't been updated, Bill. Yeah, you know, I agree. That's that's one of the problems. How do you like Optin Monster? I think I'm going to start just. I think Optin Monster is as good as anything. Um, yeah, I, I think. Um, well, one of the things is you're, you you kind of um, you really need to clarify what functionality you're really looking for. If you're if the drip if the drip marketing side isn't really something you're interested in, you you don't you, you can just utilize Mailchimp chimp to some right. extent. Um, if drip marketing is really important, you really got to look at some other solutions. Yeah, if and that's where Infusionsoft was nice. Um, well, it's nice, but like I say, there's there's much more cheaper solutions that give you about eighty percent of their functionality. Yeah, Josh mentioned a company today that says it's pretty close to Infusionsoft, nine bucks a month. Yeah, there's there's a there's a lot of movement in that market because a lot of people have been watching Infusionsoft and mm -hmm. like I said to you, um, they dropped the ball a bit because they fundamentally went into membership e-commerce, which isn't their core. No, which no, isn't their right. core competency. Um, but they chose to do that, Bill. Right, right, right. So, which is no, it, as a company. Um, but like I say, what's the there's a number of other products um, that are even more expensive than them. But you, oh yeah, yeah I've seen them out there. But they, again, that's hmm. yeah. So anyway, Jonathan. So uh, hopefully Saturday. Um, so what we got to clarify is Rebecca because she's really she's Ill. not coming. She's not coming. She got an email but, last night. So you're going to have to find. Have you got anybody else? No, I've got. To, I'll do a show tomorrow. I'm going to do a short show. I got a show I can do. Right. I'm experimenting um, with. After uh, weekly scam, I've got some ideas of creating quick shows. Do a quick blab and just come up on a show. I'll, I, I will. Um, I'll, I'll talk about it tomorrow when I do it. I like it's just a short ten minute clip of uh, just me talking. On to, I do it right on to Adobe Edition, and then I yes, can clean yes. it up, and it comes out pretty nice. That's great. So on Thursday, um. I am talking to somebody tomorrow on Zoom, mm -hmm. but I actually think I'm going to ask them to come on next week rather than coming. I'm going to ask them, um, but I think I'm going to ask them to come on next week, which gives us time to promote the yeah. show. That um, Las Vegas person is coming on. On Saturday. That sounds like a good show. I need to research her, get information. Yeah, giving you – that's – so um, – did she fill out a? Did she fill so you're, out a, you're you're jumping around a little bit. Can I finish? Oh, okay, folks. So just finishing up. A lot of work. Thank you for the live audience. Thank you, John. I see you coming back in. But um, anyway, I appreciate everybody out there. And it was a crazy day. I'm a little tired. A little tired today. I need to go.